I never think, oh, now we have to write a song that people know we can play six string sweeper patches or something like that, right? It's more about finding an interesting chord progression that evokes a specific type of feeling, finding a melody or an arrangement where you think a little bit around the corner, which is not the most obvious thing um, that you could do. <laughs> Hi there, this is Carsten at Music House Thoman, and today we got Christian Münzner with us, who is known for his work with Necrophagist, Spawn of Possession, Obscura of course, Alkaloid, and today he brought a bunch of great Ibanez guitars with him, and I guess we're gonna talk a little about those guitars. Yes, so um, here I'm having the Iron Label RGD multiscale guitar. Um, which comes with uh, fan frets, which is something which is quite new to me. Um, the nice thing about those is that you can play chord voicings that wouldn't sound so great normally on uh, other guitars. Like for example, a regular C major 7 voicing would normally sound quite nasty with normal frets. And here it works because they just seem to intonate much better than regular ones. Um, and also what I really like about the system is the uh, playability. Um, it actually leads the hand to be in a way more natural position and you can avoid a lot of unnecessary tension and, and cramps. So I believe that this system also automatically leads to better playing technique and more natural positioning of the hand. I guess it works well with especially detunings and drop tuning, so you know the middle stuff, I guess. Most probably for down tuning, I think the, the, the um, longer measure works really well, yeah. This guitar comes with a three-piece Nitro Wizard maple neck, um, which I guess is the usual necks that Ibanez guitars have. The body, like the back side of it, is um, mahogany, I think. The middle is ash and uh, the top is basically a uh, flamed maple. It's not that easy to have a, a color in a really metal guitar, I guess, but this one just looks awesome. Yeah, I think it's so too. Differently. Yeah, I, I think so too. I mean, it's is it a neck through? No, it's not. It's actually uh, so it's, this one's bolted on. Yeah, this one's okay. bolted on. Yeah. All right. So um, this guitar comes with a three-way switch. Um, I use it quite a lot because in my solos I very often switch back and forth between the bridge and the neck pickup. Like for wide and valley stuff, I just like to switch to the neck pickup. And um, this guitar doesn't have a single coil here, but therefore um, you can switch the voicings by just pulling the volume knob. So pulling it out and then yeah. pulling it back in. Yeah. So, mm. Whereas I actually like this because it's uh, quite simple in function and uh, yeah, I don't like when there's too much stuff that just keeps confusing it's, me. It's so, quite uh, accessible, I guess. Right? Yes, exactly. From, but it's not in the from, way from for the... I, I actually like the way it's positioned. It's not really in the way for the picking hand. Like some of the older models had the problem that I would like turn down the volume by hitting mm. the, the volume knob with my pinky. This doesn't happen here. So um, yeah, I'm very happy with this model. And I like to switch to the neck when I go to like more wide and dramatic stuff. So this one appears to be more a classic kind of Ibanez one. I guess they had their 30th anniversary with the RD model last year. It was I about think so, yes. Last year, I guess, yeah. It was 1987, I believe, yeah. yes. And this one's pretty much like them, I guess. And yes, it's, uh, it's pretty much an uh, 80s style, 80s fret guitar, I think. It's the uh, RG with the reversed headstock. 
This is more traditional, closer to the guitars I am already used to playing. Um, yeah, as I said, it comes with a neck through. Um, has a Dimasio tone zone in the bridge, five-way pickup switch, um, shark tooth inlay, so very much in the style of the 80s RG guitars. And uh, it's, it's also, also plays like this. I think these guitars are really made for fast playing and for the metal guitarist, actually, I think. They got a quite a slinky neck as yes. well. It's quite quite flat. You can really yeah. get a get, yes. get a grip on the exactly. Fast you don't need a lot of like you don't need a lot of like strength from a left hand to get a very good um, attack and and uh, and tone out of it. And it just plays very nice and, and very fluent. So I think they're specifically made for that style. And the cool thing about that five way switch is. Um, you can go, of course, from, from bridge pickup to split single coil, which is the right. second position, I this guess, this from one, both yes. of the humbuckers. Yeah, Splits these two, yes. Yeah. Middle position. Is both of them full? Both of them full. Yeah. And then the fourth position, I yeah, guess. This is, I think, something that is new that you didn't have in the previous uh, models. This basically switches the top humbucker from serial to parallel. In this position. Ah, okay, cool. So get more kind of a, I don't know, I guess more crispy sound, something yeah. like that. Yeah. And uh, of course, the yeah last position is gonna be the full uh, neck pickup. Neck pickup, yeah, exactly. Com complete humbucker sound. Yeah. Yeah. Well, can we hear something? Yes, yeah, sure. Um... So there's something possible with electric guitars, which appears a bit surprising to us metal players especially. Um, there is the option of playing a clean sound as well. So can you please show us what this instrument can do? Yeah, even with those metal looks, uh, this is actually possible. Uh, this is maybe not something I would do in my death metal situations very often, but uh, my solo material I play Quite a lot of clean tones here and there. Let's just uh, check the different positions of the pickups. With the clean tone? With the clean tone. It's incredible what kinds of clean tones you can get out of that thing and how much the different pickups affect the real sound. Yeah, so without I was using any myself, yeah. Incredible. Cool, cool. So quite a versatile guitar, yeah. let me say. I Definitely completely agree. So seven string guitars, I guess modern metal won't be the same without seven strings or oh, eight or oh, nine. This time we're going with a seven string, the RD F7. Can you tell us a little about it? Yeah, so this is the uh, RG7 standard, which I guess is basically the uh, seven string version of the guitars that we discussed previously. Um, it also comes with the fan fret system, which is new to me, but which, as I said previously, I really like and which I'm contemplating to switch to. Digging it in as well right now as we're talking and as we're trying. Yeah, I think it's uh, the playability is just uh, just nice. It comes with it, and it's, it's the same um, 
neck that this guitar has, just in a, as the uh, seven string version. Again, we have like a five way pickup switch. Um, I'm, I mean, I only play seven string guitars in Alkaloid, apart from that, I'm not so much of a seven string player. I'm basically a traditionalist, I guess, but um, this one just really plays super nice. And here now we tune down to A because in Alkaloid we tune down a whole step. And um, this is super easy with those guitars because they come with the um, longer measure and that's why they still intonate very well here. Uh, so the pickups in this guitar, they're called Array 7. It's basically the same pickup in the um, bridge position and in the neck position. Um, yeah, I mean, of course it sounds super heavy. <laughs> Yeah, and then of course um, we have the uh, neck position, which I like for like wide and double stuff. The very transparent tone, uh, which which I really like. Uh, I guess that the middle positions they would suit nicely for clean tone situation, basically. Um, yeah. To get a wider, wider sound, more yeah. minutes out. As we saw with the um, previous guitars. So, well, I guess uh, you use the seven strings, uh, of course, for the alkaloid stuff, um, which I guess would not work um, oh. for this style of music. Yeah. Seven strings seem to be hardly enough. And uh, as well, you used it for the second Obscura yes. album? Yes. I mean, the second Obscura album we had with the lineup that I was part of, which was technically the third Obscura album on Negum. This was uh, when we basically switched to the seven string guitars. Uh, for the majority of the songs, not always to go lower than, than usual, but also sometimes, I mean, some songs wouldn't even go lower than, than six string guitars, but you just have a wider possibility. So you could play stuff, voicings and fingerings that you wouldn't be able to do on a six string guitar. So that's the way that we started using them. Um, personally, I also used them a little bit in my solo material, in my two solo records. There's a couple of tunes which use seven string guitars, but not so many. I'm most of the time I'm a six string player. Traditionally, but um, yeah, in Alkaloid, I mean, the guys wanted to sound really heavy, so uh, that's why we definitely uh, use the seven strings. And we go even lower than the regular tuning, so we tune one whole step lower than, than it normally comes. So we tune to low A, basically. <laughs> 